What's up guys? Welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. Welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. Today we're looking at how to start a sheet metal shop for your business, creating metal roofing trim and other things like that for your customers. Today I've got uh, Mike from Marty Robbins Roofing and Ryan from Sheffield Metals to help me out. So talk to me about your business. How do you know when it might be time for your business to start a sheet metal shop and kind of go down that path? Mike, can I start with you? Well, mostly by outsourcing. Now, where are you getting your metal from? Uh, what kind of quality are you getting? Uh, that that was the big thing for us. And uh, the metal that we were getting before just wasn't right. You know, just uh, the bins were not accurate. And uh, so we wanted to make that investment to to get so every bin was exactly the same every time. Okay, yeah. So it really starts with quality for your own products because kind of similar to buying your own roll former instead of buying pre-manufactured panels, you kind of control that quality from start to finish and your own lead times. When you have that equipment, it also allows you to sell to other roofers out there. Is that right? How do you? Uh, how does that kind of work? One of our biggest customers is glass companies around here. So because, uh, you know, every break's exactly the same right every time. So, uh, but we sell, you know, glass companies, metal building companies, you know, anybody. So, uh, I mean, we never, we never dreamed it was going to take off like it took off. When it comes to standing seam metal roofing specifically, what metalworking capabilities do you have to have in a sheet metal shop to to fabricate the trim needed for those kind of projects? You need a good folder, a good shear. Then you need somebody to run it that has accurate knowledge of pitches, angles, and stuff like that. What should someone think about when it comes to hiring for that position or or maybe promoting somebody in their own organization to to operate that shop? For us, I'd rather hire somebody that knows anything, straight out of school, that's wanting to learn. Uh, that way they don't have any preconceived things of what they're doing. That way I can teach them how to cut with snips. I can teach them the right angles and I can teach them the way we do it. So let's talk about maybe a company that uh, doesn't do a lot of standing seam metal roofing or maybe they're brand new and they still wanna manufacture their own trim. You know, are there low budget options for these this kind of equipment? Sure. I mean, when we first started, we'd done handbrakes. Uh, had a Chicago old handbrake and a Gary Slitter, and that's kind of how we started. And that's that's really the lowest end budget that you could go. Ryan, kind of talk to me about how Sheffield um, provides the flat sheet and the coil, you know, necessary to to fabricate all the all the pieces and parts of the metal roofing system. Yeah. So we. Um we stock, you know, coil and master coil form and like we'll have customers call in, order a specific amount of sheets and coil and then we'll custom slit to that order and then, if I'm, you know, create it up and ship it out to their job site or, or their shop. So Mike, you know, what's kind of the next step uh, for a sheet metal shop? You know, what options are there out there to make things easier, more efficient um, and higher quality? You know, you can start out with a 10 foot break computer folder, of course you want a computer folder. Uh, and then you can step up to the 20 foot folders, uh, make you see have less joints. You know, they're, all of it's expensive, uh, but you know, you can go as high as you want to go or you can stay with the basic level. So what kind of benefits does a computer controlled folder give you over a handbrake? Well, every measurement's exactly the same every time. Every bend's exactly the same every time. Uh, and that's, that's a must have for us. And then when you, you know, maybe upgrade to a 20 foot folder, uh, you know, I think Sheffield stocks 10 foot flat sheets. So do you, uh, do you cut coil to, to match that size? Yeah. I mean, when you get to the 20 foot folder, you want your own cut the length line in that you want to be able to film it. Uh, so your metal don't get scratched. You can get the coils pre-filmed or you can get it bare. We always get ours bare. So I, I we put our film on it. When you, you know, step up to those, uh, larger machines, um, that's going to have to, there's other requirements that you're going to have to think about, you know, when you, when you kind of get those upgrades. Oh yeah. When you like, we start, we do 10,000 pound coals. So in that you got to have overhead crane, some way to unload it, uh, some way to store it, inventory, uh, stuff like that. So, you know, what other considerations should a business owner have, uh, you know, about adding a, a sheet metal shop to their to their business, you know, whether it be employees or material handling like we talked about? What's some other things that you've learned over the years? Good employees, uh, good equipment, 
uh, place for inventory. Uh, when we first started, we didn't, we didn't have no clue about inventory. Uh, in that, you want clips, rivets, caulking, you know, all the little necessaries that, that goes along with metal roofing. And I imagine, you know, creating your own trim and flashings for your own roofing company was pretty important as a, as a learning step in order to branch out into selling to other other companies as well. You know, what are some things that you learned in those early days um, that you kind of apply now? Know your capabilities. Uh, don't overpromise. I, I tell people, if you can draw it, we can build it. Uh, but then I had to go back and say, within the machine's capabilities. A lot of architects think if they can draw it, then they, it'll work. And that doesn't always happen. I was going to say, we get a lot of, of people who, um, you know, been buying panels and they call you and they're like, hey, we want to start making our own panels. And then, um, you know, they start asking you questions. You get into, well, do you have a brake and a shear? And they're like, no. It's like, well, do you have a four clips? And they're like, no. We're like, well, how are you going to move the coils around? And we're like, well, how much do they weigh? And we're like, you know, how much do you want them to weigh? And so we get a lot of, you know, people who ask for small coils. And we're like, like a couple hundred pounds. And we're like, you're not going to want to do metal roofing with a couple hundred pound coils. So a lot of, a lot of people don't understand you need like a facility, like he was saying, even just a basic up warp lift. Um, a lot of these brakes and shears, I see a lot of these new sheet metal shops still realize they need three phase power, which then they go to a phase converter, um, which is, which is kind of big in some areas as far as getting three phase power. It's expensive. Um, and it's sometimes not even possible. Uh, depends on the building. It's probably one of the bigger things I've run into dealing with people who want to start out, just knowing all those little ins and outs. They see like they see someone like Mike over here, you know, just pumping metal out, making trim, and like, oh, I can do it. I can, I can make all that money. But they don't realize, like he said, he's in it for thirty something years. It's a lot easier for Mike now, but he's you know, he's learned over the past 30 something years, so all the ins and outs. And, um, but yeah, there's, there's a ton that goes in besides having a, the roll former, the break and the shear. That kind of is really important when you're first starting out that you do all that research up front, you know, before major decisions are made, um, you know, maybe where your facility is going to be, what kind of equipment you're going to have. Those expectations are really important to have early on. You just can't go into a regular building and put a sheet metal shop. You got to have the thickness of your slab. It's got to be right. These machines are heavy. Uh, a four inch regular slab is not, is not thick enough to hold these machines. Typically you want a six or eight inch slab. And that's, we got right now we got an eight inch slab upstairs and then downstairs we got a six inch slab. Ryan, talk to me about, you know, if someone does want to purchase some of these uh, machines, you know, where can get, where can they get them from? So they can buy them direct from Sheffield. We um, work close with New Tech Machinery. We can sell New Tech Machines as well, and as well as uh, Brakes and Shears from Sedan or um, this Metal Former as well. Talk to me about training. You know, is that important uh, for someone to get for their employees? You know, how should someone be trained on this these machines? With the training, you know, it's very important that they learn how to sequence stuff. Uh, that's, your, that's your number one hurdle. Uh, that's why you need you always need somebody that has a little bit of sheet metal knowledge uh, on folding and stuff. What do you mean by sequencing? Uh, if you have a lot of bends and breaks, you got to know which one to bend first, second, third, when to do, when to flip it, when not to flip it. Uh, that's that's all in sequencing. Well, thank you, Mike, and thank you, Ryan, for joining me today on Q and A Mondays. I definitely learned a lot about opening a sheet metal shop, and it's so important to do uh, research up front. You know, whether you're a new business owner or someone that's looking to expand your business. So if you have any questions, comment down below. We'd love to answer them. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.